Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Dr. Mukherjee once again and today we'll talk about a new entity called heart failure with recovered ejection fraction. We grew up thinking that heart failure is a single entity. After that, we came to know that heart failure has different kinds of ejection fractions. The one with preserved ejection fraction, the one with reduced ejection fraction and the one with the uh, mid-range ejection fraction. But what today we're going to concentrate upon is the heart failure with recovered ejection fraction. We all know that some people with reduced rejection fraction will improve and have normal ejection fractions over time. But who exactly are the people in whom the ejection fraction is going to become normal? And once it becomes normal, in whom it will stay like that and whom it is going to deteriorate again? And then what could we do to prevent this recurrence of heart failure and then fall in ejection fraction again? How do we follow up these patients? These are the important questions that we would like to answer today. What exactly is the definition with heart failure with the recovered ejection fraction? We need to have a documented ejection fraction of less than 40% to begin with. And then we should have another documented ejection fraction of more than 40% uh, 3 to 6 months down the line. And then the improvement in ejection fraction should be more than 10%. These are the criteria. The first one is documented ejection fraction of less than 40% initially with a subsequent documentation of ejection fraction more than 40% with a 10% increment in ejection fraction in these 3 to 6 months at least. And then after these changes should be accompanied by improvement in LV volumes. This is the definition for heart failure with recovered ejection fraction. This is basically this heart failure with recovered ejection fraction is a different entity from heart failure with preserved ejection fraction because both of them could have a normal ejection fraction but the trajectory is different. The heart failure with recovered ejection fractions have a, a decreased ejection fraction to begin with but heart failure with preserved ejection fraction people they always had a normal ejection fraction to begin with. And then the heart failure with mid-range ejection fraction also where the ejection fraction is between 40 and 50 it is a wider entity which may include people with heart failure with recovered ejection fraction or people who uh, initially had a heart failure with preserved ejection fraction and then their ejection fraction has slowly fallen. The incidence of this heart failure with the recovered ejection fraction is variously reported between 10 to 40 percent in all the heart failure patients and recovery may occur even when the heart failure was with a very low ejection fraction to start with and the recovery usually occurs because of the LV remodeling and mostly it happens because of guideline directed medical treatment though sometimes it may happen spontaneously as well. And there are certain etiologies of heart failure which tend to recover. Okay, These people are more prone to have a recovered ejection fractions. So these etiologies are the first group are an etiologies with abnormal energy kinetics. These are chronic tachycardia related heart failures, hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism related heart failures. The second group which improve over time involves improved immune response. These are peripartum cardiomyopathy, acute lymphocytic myocarditis or systemic inflammatory response syndrome. Even patients with toxic insults who have heart failure also tend to improve with time. These are anthracycline dependent heart failures, tyrosine kinase inhibitors and monoclonal antibodies which may cause heart failure but once these toxic stimulants are stopped the heart failure may recover. And as we all know ischemic etiology with a viable myocardium sometimes improves after re revascularization. Though we cannot actually exactly predict who are going to improve but a lot of these patients improve after revascularization. These are the patients in whom the recovery from a low ejection fraction is most commonly expected. The younger patients, the females, the non-ischemic etiology patients, the heart failure with a sharp duration and then absence of left bundle branch block on the ECG and presence of truncations in tight in gene and genetic testing and a greater decrease in BNP with guideline directed treatment and then absence of a late gadolinism enhancement on uh, cardiac MRI. And what is the natural history of these patients who have recovered from heart failure? A significant number of these patients will recur, develop recurrent LV dysfunction. 
actually the improvement may be dubbed as a myocardial remission this is actually remission again it may go for a relapse and sudden death risk in these patients doesn't disappear with the normalization of ejection fraction these are very important things more often than not once we see a patient with heart failure with recovered ejection fraction the tendency is to reassure that everything has become normal but this is not the case a lot of these people can develop recurrent lv dysfunction and then sometimes they may die suddenly as well the clinical predictors of recurrence in who the recurrent reduction in lv ejection fraction may occur after recovery people with more comorbidities and then clinically who have heart failure symptoms and signs and people who have dyspnea and then require diuretics for symptom relief and people who have left mandible branch block on the ecg and then when you do an echocardiogram with longitudinal strain if there is an abnormality of longitudinal strain these people are much more prone for recurrences of reduction in ejection fraction and higher biomarkers despite normalization of ejection fraction also is one of the signs and the sudden death risk in these people can somewhat be predicted with genetic testing in which dsp or scn5a or lmna and flnc mutations are more commonly associated with sudden cardiac death in these patients so it is very important for us to follow up these patients not only because there is a higher risk of recurrence of heart failure in these patients but also because we need to be cautious of any risk of sudden cardiac death we do an echocardiogram every 6 months until the first 1 to 1 and 1/2 years after 1 year of clinically stable heart failure with recovered ejection fraction every 6 to 12 months we need to do one echocardiogram and after that every 1 to 3 years we should subject them for an ecg echocardiogram and bnp investigations as well as we should also look for current cardiac conditions like further ischemic cardiomyopathy or something else that is developing after that how should we treat these patients with heart failure with recovered ejection fraction do they need any treatment at all indeed they require they need the guideline directed medical treatment and it cannot be stopped the beta blockers are the most important medications followed by the acer ace inhibitors or arbs and then the menlocortisone receptor antagonists the diuretics may be reduced or even stopped if the diuretics are still required the up titration of gdmt is required and we may need to substitute the ace and the ace inhibitors or arbs with sacubitril valsartan combination so all the guideline directed medical treatment have to be given for these patients as far as the devices are concerned if there is a crtd there is no problem you definitely have to change the pulse generator even when the ejection fraction becomes normal otherwise it may go back to a low ejection fraction as far as icd is concerned there is a little bit of dispute but the icd pulse generator has to be definitely changed if there is a genetic mutation that in indicates a high arrhythmia risk or if there is a history of appropriate shocks or even when the ecg remains abnormal despite a normalization of ejection fraction but usually it is advised to change the pulse generator of the icd even when the ejection fraction becomes normal so ladies and gentlemen this is a brief video about the heart failure with recovered ejection fraction most of the material in this video has been taken from a jack scientific expert panel statement that was released in may 2020 thank you so much have a good day